All right, welcome guests. I can see people starting to log in. Thank you for coming. Just to make sure that you are in the right place. If you are watching this live on January 17th, then this is a webinar that is designed to help students and parents and families understand the community college application process, what is available at our local community college districts, and also the really amazing funding opportunity that you have in the Promise Scholarship, um, which is basically kind of like two years of full-time college for free tuition. It's a pretty amazing program. And you'll notice you might not be able to type into the chat, although I'll sometimes be putting links in there, like hyperlinks to websites and things like that. But if you look on the bottom of your screen, you should see a Q&A and you can ask questions in there. Any question that you have, please go ahead and put it in there and we will do our best to answer it. If I'm not able to answer it just by typing, then I will unmute myself and ask Luke. So that brings us to our guest. Uh, tonight we have Luke Menchaca um, from the San Diego Community College District, which comprises San Diego City College, as well as Miramar and Mesa and the College of Continuing Education. Um, and he does an incredible amount of, of stuff that has to do with outreach to the community and making sure that you all are aware of all the different programs and opportunities and things that are available through our community college system. Um, so I am going to go ahead and pass it over to Luke Menchaca and let him take it away. No, oh, thank you so much, Carla. It's great to it's great to be here this evening, y'all, and uh, happy happy Wednesday. Um, I hope uh, you all had a tremendous break. I'm sure school just got back going, and uh, and you're already head first in there, get, getting started. So. Uh, first off, I just want to congratulate you for being here. And that, that's a huge step in itself, right? Uh, and really one of the first steps uh, in, in your, your college journey, one of the big ones, right? Uh, you, you've done a ton of work already, whether it be passing a class, whether it be, you know, uh, applying for college. Uh, but this last step is plugging in like that I like to call, plugging in to see who's out there to support you. And the, and the one big thing that I want you to leave here, if you don't leave with anything else here today, is that there's people that work at college campuses at any college not just not just the ones that I get to support but at, at college campuses that are here to help you uh, and when I say help it's not just like you know just basic support but it's really to help you one to figure it out two uh, to get you to support it from semester to semester but three to make sure you graduate and that you get access to the field that it is that you want to go and let's not get it twisted y'all let's not get confused about it our goal is to help you to pursue your goal like what is your goal do you want to be a doctor do you want to be a chemist uh, do you want to go into designing auto automotive uh, vehicles, whether it be a, a, a car that drives on the ground or maybe it's a flying car? I don't know. I don't know what they're, that it's out there in the future. Hearing about an electric car, now it's a reality. It was insane to think about 20, 30 years ago, right? So it, the, the world and the possibilities are endless with your career and your development. And I want you to know that it can start in college, and to say that college is the end all be all is, you know, could be could be true for a lot of folks. But if you're like myself and you needed support in figuring out what your direction is, then college is a great place to start. And for folks that are looking at getting into a field that they don't know anything about, or maybe their parents haven't been there, or maybe their brother or sister hasn't been there, or their cousin hasn't been there, or didn't have a friend, College is a place to develop the necessary skills in order to get access to those fields. And just because you don't have a background in it doesn't mean that you can't have access to it. So before we get started, I want you to think to yourself and say to yourself, if, if you don't think like, hey, I'm not meant to be a doctor or I'm not meant to be an engineer, I want you to let that go. I want you to let that go and I want you to, to walk strong in this process and realize that that's what you want. If that is what you want, then we can help you get there. You just got to do the work in between. And guess what? We're going to be there to help you out. Okay. So let's get started uh, with this. And again, my name is Luke. Uh, I'm from the San Diego Community College District representing San Diego City, Mesa, Miramar, and the College of Continuing Education. Uh, my official title is I'm, I'm the Dean of Outreach and Student Affairs. So I get to hang out with cool folks like you uh, in the chat and everything. So if you got questions, y'all, please use the Q&A feature. 
if uh, if the Q&A features too much drama for you, I get it. No problem. Feel free to use the chat. Uh, we'll, we'll help you out either way. I'm going to um, do both tonight. One of my one of my staff here that just transferred from Mesa College to SDSU, they had a they had a last minute add of a course at SDSU for accounting. So she wasn't able to come and help me tonight. But we're going to double duty tonight. Carla's got my back 100 percent and we'll make sure we get you all supported. So I want to talk about your education. I want to talk about your education uh, here this evening, right? And the first thing I really want to talk about is what is your professional goals, right? That's what I want you to think about now, because the end goal, my friends, is not your degree. That's a step in your journey. But I want you to know your education is not your end goal. What are your professional goals? Is it a specific title? Is it a certain amount of compensation? Is it retirement? Is it benefits? What are your professional goals? And I want you to be able to identify those because if you don't know where you're going, how can we actually help you get there? So that should be a continuous conversation in your head about where do you want to go? What do you want to be? What do you want to accomplish? And I want you to challenge yourself about that. Challenge and see if that is something you really want to do. OK, uh, I'm going to get to specific dates in a quick couple minutes and we'll dive in. Uh, the next couple of things I want to talk about is personal, right? Like, what, what is it? What is it in life that, that you want for your personal? Is it you want family, children, a certain home? And then lastly, do you want to experience some things? Is it vacation, events, uh, travel? I really want you to think about what it is that you want and how can your education align with all those things, right? Because at the end of the day, I want you to be able to stand out versus other folks. When you go to interview for a job, when you go to obtain the career that it is that you would like to obtain, I want you to be able to walk strong, go in there, interview and do great in that interview to get the job that you want to get okay uh, because here it is at the end of the day not only do you we want to prepare you for graduation we want you to graduate but we also want to prepare you for your career and that's the one step i really want to help them uh get, get home for you tonight as well just to make sure that college yes is for your education but we also want to help you by doing research and figuring out what the careers that you want to do. We want to help you prepare to be in a specific office or get you access to an internship. Uh, those are the things that we're looking to really dive in today. But let's dive in just a little bit more about our colleges, and then we'll get to very, very much specifics about promise and enrollment, all those key dates. We're going to get you all that good stuff very, very shortly. So again, y'all, we have four colleges at your disposal. And I, the one thing I really want you to know is that we have four colleges, uh, but also 10 different campuses. So I don't like to just say one thing and, and say that you, you have to go to one college. The large majority of our students will go to all four colleges. And a lot of times it's a great thing because it gives you access to four class schedules, uh, gives you access to four sets of professors, um, and, and really uh, four sets of majors, right? Uh, so that's definitely amazing, okay? Now, just a couple of things that I want to note here is that uh, we have lots of different items that that you can kind of uh, get involved with, whether it be a certificate, uh, an associate's degree, all the way up to a bachelor's degree. Our district offers three bachelor's degrees, uh, going to two right now, but three coming up pretty quick. Uh, City College has a cyber defense and analysis bachelor's degree. Mesa College has a health and information management uh, bachelor's degree. And uh, Miramar College is going to be getting a public safety management. So if you're looking to get a bachelor's degree, you can do those at our community colleges, which is really exciting. But at the end of the day, too, we also have opportunities to where you can actually transfer to a California State University, a UC, and even some private and vocational colleges. Okay, so you do have access to these programs uh, if you do want to transfer, and that's what makes it really exciting. So wherever it is that you want to go, we definitely have a program for you. All right, y'all. Uh, a couple more things I just want to talk about, then we'll get into the really nitty gritty of Promise. I know that a lot of I see some Promise programs, so I'm going to make sure we get and spend the large majority of our time on that, and then we'll dive into that. Um, I did want to talk about career pathways for a quick second. So if you're a student that's uh, kind of going back and forth about like what it is that you want to do, maybe you're unsure about like what your path is, uh, or hey, I'm not too sure if I just want to sit in a classroom and just hear a lecture. Well, we have a lot of hands-on programs that you have access to at the community college. 
First being, this is a great example. This is green building energy professional. So if you're looking to go into greenhouses, all those great things, um, you have access to those, right? Uh, another program that I like is culinary management. These are options. You don't have to take these courses. Uh, these are ones that you could potentially get into. So I always like to mention these. And then the last one, just an example, is diesel technology. So these are just really cool examples that you can see like, this is college, right? Doesn't You don't have to choose this program. You don't have to go down this path, but you can absolutely go down this path if this is something that you wanna dive into, okay? Now let's talk about cost. I see like financial aid being a cost. So I like to lay the groundwork of how much it's gonna cost and kind of where we're going and all those great things. So this is a specific cost without San Diego Promise. So for all students that enroll at the community college, uh, we have a $2 rep student representation fee. Uh, we have a $21 health fee, uh, $46 per unit um, fee. So uh, you can kind of see uh, how much it is per unit and the total cost per semester, y'all. So you're going to pay this twice a year if you're a student with us is going to be $574 for 12 units. And then if you take more than that, it's going to be around 851 Okay. Uh, so lots of different uh, costs, but we're going to help you with that. Uh, looking specifically more, uh, I'm going to skip this just because I feel like uh, what we're trying to do is you all want to know some nitty gritty about Promise. So I'm going to dive into Promise uh, so we can really touch on that. Okay, so Promise is a two year completion program designed to ensure students at San Diego City, Mesa, Miramar College complete their educational goal. And that's really the underlying goal for Promise is that we want students uh, to graduate. We want students to finish. So how does Promise support you? And these are all the questions you're talking about this evening. Uh, it's kind of going to align with this right now. So Promise provides up to two years of free tuition and health fees. So all students have to pay tuition. All students have to pay health fees. Uh, right. Uh, and this is super important. Uh, for that I want you to know. Next, uh, up to two years of book grants. So students are going to be able to uh, get access to book grants with Promise if they're qualified. Uh, so this is something that you can also get. Lastly, we also have folks that are really uh, there to support you, whether it be counselors, deans, coordinators, technicians, project assistants, uh, peer mentors. We have folks that are going to be there to help you uh, with this process. Okay. Now, Promise is not income-based, so even if you make a billion dollars a year, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, if you'll qualify. Promise is open to everyone regardless of income uh, status, right? So if we don't use it as a measure to admit students into Promise. It's not merit-based, so we're not looking at transcripts, grade point average, letters of recommendation. We're not going to look, look review that in order to admit you into Promise. And then lastly, students who complete admission requirements and meet eligibility will be granted into Promise. And this is really exciting because then you, the student, uh, don't have to worry about like, oh, will I qualify because my income or is a certain income going to disqualify me? Students are going to be able to have access. And generally, if you are a recent high, high school graduate, so if you're graduating in June, which I'm seeing here, May and June, you should be able to graduate uh, high school and then enroll right into one of our three colleges at the start of August. And that's really when we're going to get started for all of you. Okay. Now, let's talk about cost with the promise. So I know we're talking about financial aid and what it's going to cost. And uh, this is a, a huge part of, of what we're doing. So cost with the promise is this at the very most. So I can't get rid of the student representation fee. We do waive the health fee and we do waive the enrollment fee. So at the very max that you would pay is $2, which is tremendous for uh, education at the community college. And the thing that a lot of people forget is that this is going to help you complete around 50% of a bachelor's degree. So folks who are looking to uh, eventually transfer and obtain a bachelor's degree, about 50% of it is going to be paid uh, because of promise for you. So those two years you're at the community college with us at San Diego City, Mesa, Miramar, or the College of Continuing Education, uh, we're going to be able to help you and pay for your college classes and reduce the amount of costs for your fees down to $2, okay? Now let's talk a little bit about 
what you're going to receive in Promise. Because Promise is a very basic program. I know we have questions about financial aid. When can I get started? I'm going to get there. But I kind of want to give you the nitty gritty down of how we're going to help you in paying for your college fees. Okay. Uh, so student enrollment fee is $46. Uh, if you're a student who receives other forms of financial aid, um, your financial aid is going to pay for you uh, for your fees. Next, your health fee. Uh, we're going to pay for all of our students' health fees at $21. Uh, the student representation fee will be paid by the student. But for students receiving other forms of financial aid, in general, you will be eligible for a book grant for up to $200 which is fantastic. So for students who don't qualify for financial aid, so maybe your income exceeds the amount of most scholarships, this is how we can support you. Your $46 per unit fee, uh, we're gonna pay that by promise, which is amazing. We're also gonna pay for your health fee at $21. You'll have to pay for your student representation fee. Unfortunately, we do not offer book grants to students who don't qualify for financial aid. But essentially, you are only going to be covered for, uh, only have to pay the $2 uh, for each semester that you're enrolled in Promise. So this is an awesome, awesome resource again, y'all, uh, that you'll have to dive into. So let's talk about pathways. Uh, and from my, my understanding, a lot of you are going to be uh, in high school at the moment and graduating in June um, or shortly after. So uh, you're in great shape. So Really, your pathway that we're going to really focus on this evening is, is pathway number one. Okay, and this pathway number one is going to be applicants will not be admitted into the San Diego Promise if you enrolled, earned, or attempted, or have any post-secondary experience post-high school uh, or equivalent completion. So for all of you, even if you're taking college classes while you're in high school, maybe it's through the CCAP program, uh, early access to college courses, you are completely fine 100%. I don't want you to worry about that because really we're looking at after high school graduation. So as long as you've never taken any college courses, you're going to qualify for pathway, one, for pathway one and you don't really have to worry about that. So it's a great question. Uh, we'll make sure that uh, we kind of support you with this. Okay. Can I do see? Can I, yep. can I ask you a sure. question, or do you want me to hold that for? Go for it. Yeah, go for it. So there's somebody who has a student who's a 12th grader. They're sure. going to they're going to graduate this spring in like May or June. They'll graduate. They do want to apply for the promise, and they do want to apply for community college classes, but they want to take that that fall 2024 semester off and start in spring, spring of 2025. So first, their first question is like, if they did that, would they still be able to apply for Promise, assuming they didn't take any other college classes in the fall? Um, and then also, when did when does registration open for spring classes typically? So like, when would they apply if they know they're going to graduate, but take a semester off, but then start in the spring of 2025? Does that make sense? Yeah, I got you. Um, so that's okay. a really good question. So for for promise in general really what we're looking at is that you haven't taken college classes post high school graduation so as long as you don't enroll in any college classes in between that space between when you graduate high school and when you want to start college in general you should have no problem uh, being eligible for san diego promise so right now we we have students that graduated June 2023 and didn't take classes fall 2023, but now want to start in January 2024. We admitted quite a few of those students uh, and to into prompt. So as long as funding exists, uh, we absolutely can admit students uh, for spring. And, and the reason I say that, and we don't anticipate funding go away, but I can't, you know, promise a, a million percent to say that there's going to be uh, funding every single year for every single student. But as long as funding exists and, you know, laws don't change with with promise eligibility, your student should qualify no problem at all. So, um, you know, students taking a, a gap semester or, or uh, that does happen and we do admit those students, you just want to make sure that the student doesn't enroll at a different college 
or take any college classes anywhere else because that would disqualify them from San Diego Promise. And like I'm talking here in Pathway 1, you would lose this eligibility in Pathway 1 because you took college classes somewhere else or maybe you took one class or something like that. So just full transparency, we do look at your course history at different colleges. So you just want to make sure if you're going to be off from school, be off completely from school and then come back to us in spring 24. When does registration typically open for spring classes? Like at what point yeah. in the fall does it open? Yeah, so we're, we're our fall, our, our spring enrollment typically starts in November for the, the following year. And, and if you give me a second, I can probably get you a specific date if you want to see a specific date. Um, uh, so we can get that for you. We typically have our calendars um, out like a whole year ahead of time. So I can grab that date if you're looking for that specifically of when you're looking to kind of get started. So uh, for spring 25, um, again, something to note is uh, our schedule will post online. Our, our let me take a step back. Our application for spring will open September 11th. So that's something you want. I'll put it in the chat for you. Um, okay, that's when the application will open. If you want to see what classes we're going to offer, this is a great a great date to kind of remember. Uh, our classes will be posted online October 16th. Okay, uh, registration for classes begin November November 4th. Okay. All right. And then class will begin uh, February 3rd, 2025. So that's kind of your timeline typically uh, for getting started for next spring 2025. Uh, typically, we open the promise application uh, October uh, for, uh, for spring. Okay, is that all the questions you have for, for spring 25? That's awesome. You're getting the information early. Yes, thank you. Cool. All right. And then I got I got fall dates for y'all in a quick second. I got them all outlined beautifully on a slide, so we'll get you right there. Um, I don't anticipate anyone, but maybe I'm speaking to a parent or a, or a brother or sister. Uh, we do have pathway number two, y'all, that I, I kind of want to share with you a, a quick second. So if you ever attended one of our colleges, say, you know, more than three semesters ago, and maybe you're interested in coming back to to start your education, you would actually be eligible for promise. OK, so as long as you haven't taken courses from fall 22 to fall 23, uh, you yourself can be uh, have access to promise. So it's really, really awesome that we're offering this. This is a brand new pathway that we have for students. So we even have students that are students that went to school with us pre-pandemic or even during the pandemic that now could come back with us and, and, and start this process again. So if you know someone that may be interested in returning to college, maybe they went to one of our schools before, I highly encourage y'all to, to really tap into this. And then really the last one I just want to mention too is that if you identify in any one of these populations, whether you're a graduate of our College of Continuing Education, uh, maybe you're a veteran in the U.S. Armed Forces, an undocumented student. Maybe, you know, obviously, I know being an undocumented student could be kind of scary at times, right? Because you don't know, you know, status, or you're a little worried about your documentation, or maybe some, you know, have a background in the justice system or a foster youth. We want you to know we have a special pathway for you as well, I promise. So we don't want you, the students, to be kind of left out in that. Uh, so we, I definitely want to make sure that you all have access. And uh, just, I did, I definitely did want to mention this for y'all. Okay. All right. So let's talk about requirements for promise and then we'll, we'll, we'll keep kind of pushing forward. So, um, Lots of questions about promise, but you will not get promise unless we get these things done. So I definitely want to mention this. Um, fall start dates are great, but let me mention these real quick. And that way you, you understand uh, what we're looking for to process your application. OK. All right. So the first thing we need you to do, all students, we need you to graduate high school or complete some sort of high school equivalency. That could be a high school diploma, could be a GED, it could be a high school equivalency exam. We need you to complete your high school uh, a diploma or degree uh, in order to be qualified for promise. Second, you need to be a California resident. 
So a resident is living in the state of California for one year and one day. Uh, so that's really important. We cannot admit you into promise and pay for your classes unless you're qualified as a California resident. Next, financial aid application. This is gonna be very important to us. Uh, we want you to submit an application. And then last but not least, we need you to uh, enroll in 12 units. Okay, very, very important. Now, just a couple things and I'll kind of show. Uh, we have three real big steps that you have to accomplish. It's very, very easy. Everyone here should submit a financial aid application, right? That's the real biggest step. Outside of that, I just need you to apply to our district. If you've already been a student with us and you maybe took college classes in high school, you don't have to reapply. If you know your 10-digit student ID number, uh, you can apply for Promise as soon as Monday. Spoiler alert, right? I'll tell you in a quick second when it opens. Uh, and the next step is gonna be applying to Promise. And again, uh, that application, and I'll kind of go over the specific dates in a little bit, but that application for fall 24, so students looking to enroll in August, 2024, is gonna be Monday, January 22nd. And we'll open it up sometime midday for you all to start applying. Okay, last, we do ask you to, com to complete a couple orientations, one for new students and one for the promise. And then really the last one that you have to do in order to meet our requirements is to meet with a counselor to plan your classes. So we like to make the process very easy. We don't like a whole lot of things that you have to do. We try to make it very simple and not require any work. And really it's two extra steps in that you need to apply to Promise, which takes around five minutes, and then also do an orientation with the Promise team, which is about an hour. But that's a great session for you to kind of tap in and get plugged in. Okay, um, I did wanna to speak to a couple students specifically. Um, now we, if you're a student that, that has an IEP plan, maybe a 504 plan, I wanted to talk a little bit about this. And this is specifically for students who are looking to reduce the mandatory amount of units that they have to enroll in for college. And this is important because I know a lot of times families will approach me and say, hey, Luke, like, I don't think my student can take 12 units. It's just a lot for them. You know, they never had to take that many classes before. We have a process to reduce that amount of units to equal to have a full-time equivalency. Some students will get six units uh, that they'll have to take. Some will get nine units that they'll have to take. But really this process is by submitting a waiver of full-time status requirement for student success programs. And specifically, this is with our disability support programs and services. Okay, and this is super important to me because I, you know, myself, I'm a, I was a student with a disability. Uh, I use these services, so I always like to mention that there is a process for this, and we do not like people to be discouraged by um, the the full time equivalency status, and and it, it's just one of those things where we like folks to feel comfortable and being in college and successful. And sometimes we we do need to adjust the requirements for our students, right? So I definitely want to make sure that folks are aware that there is a process for this. Okay. Now, so before we dive into the, the admissions requirements, I just wanna mention a couple of things, right? I wanna mention a couple of things. Um, I want you all to know that uh, there's a, a lot of bullets on the screen. It, it's not too crazy. And I want you to know that we're gonna be here to help you fully uh, with this process. So don't feel like you gotta do it on your own. Don't feel like, hey, you're like, oh, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to do it. We got you, we're gonna support you 100%. So we're gonna dive into the requirements right here. So first thing we're gonna do in order for, to admit you into Promise, we're gonna verify that we have an application for admission for you. That's step one, okay? Two, we wanna make sure that we received a Promise application. We see, we review it, make sure everything looks good. We're gonna be all great for that. We're gonna make sure you meet the Promise admissions requirements. And we look at your California residency. We make sure that you have a 24-25 financial aid application on file. We also make sure that you have your high school diploma, okay? We verify your eligibility in pathway one, two, or three uh, with this. And then lastly, uh, the last step that you have to do is to make sure that you enroll in 12 or more units. Okay, that's going to be the key thing for you all. We do not admit students into Promise until you enroll into 12 units, okay? That's very, very important. It's After that, it's typically a quick turnaround. 
if you feel like you want to pay for your um you know units and and get it going we we do offer uh reimbursement where if if your family pays for it we do reimburse the the payment whether if you paid by cash we send you a check if you pay by credit card, we will refund a credit card. So uh, we will not pay for your classes until you enroll into 12 units. So that's kind of a, a, a great feature for our students because there's not needs for a contract. There's not needs for extra steps that you have to do. Last year, we had an additional contract that we asked students to do, and it did create a barrier for a lot of folks. Uh, so we're trying to get rid of that barrier for students. So you're not you're not having to submit another document or anything like that. This is going to help streamline the process and make sure that you get into Promise as fast as you can. All right. Now um, I'm going to skip over maintaining eligibility, and I just kind of wanted to go over key dates because uh, I see a lot of folks are eager about the dates. So here we go. All right. So the application opens Monday, January twenty second. That is this Monday, y'all. Um, Monday is the application uh, when you, you need to kind of jump in. And for the promise, uh, our application is the same. We don't change the link. We just update the, the application, right? So in order for you to uh, kind of connect with us and to apply, it's a very simple, uh, very simple application. Uh, and you can check the application right now for spring if you wanted to, uh, and you can kind of check it out. Uh, so I just dropped that in the link for you. So that link will be fresh all the time. You won't have to go to a different application. Uh, you'll log into the Promise application. It's very basic and that will open January 22nd. That's this Monday. If you're looking to enroll in Promise for fall 2022. Okay. Next, our priority application deadline is Sunday, April 5th, 2024. So you all are here in this session. Okay. I hope by Monday you submit your application so you don't have to worry about applying to Promise. There are no fees. There's no fees associated with applying. It's an absolutely free application that you have to go through. You don't have to submit any additional information. If you haven't applied yet, you can apply to admission starting on Monday for fall, and you can apply on Tuesday after you get your student ID number. It is mandatory to apply with your student ID number from one of our colleges, and in order to do that, you have to apply for admission first, okay? A couple other dates, you know, I know you all wanted the fall date, so here we go. The class schedule will post April 15th, so if you want to see what classes we're going to be offering, the times, the locations, what professors, we are post that April 15th, 2024. Shortly after, we have our registration begins. April 29th. So April 29th is when we'll start registration. Newer students generally register about a week or two after that date uh, because, you know, we do work on priorities. So some of our students that have been around for a little bit will register first. It's just like the lunch line. Eventually you'll get there. Uh, but our newer students will generally register a week or two after that date right there. Okay. Next, our deadline, our deadline, and let me update this real quick. This is for spring. Our deadline for promise, y'all. So, but you all should not have an issue with this because you're, you're speaking to me today. So you should not have an issue with, with, uh, with me kind of, you know, submitting this. I want you to know that you have this information uh, right now. So I don't want you to wait to submit this. Uh, this is really a good time for you all to just do it. The best advice I can give you is just to submit as soon as you can. Uh, submit it Monday. Uh, that way you don't have to stress about it. Uh, and then we that way we can make sure we get you into promise, you get early priority, and you really don't have to worry about it. So the application deadline for fall is going to be August 5th, August 5th, 2024. And that's at 11.59 p.m. And the reason we do that is we like to allow folks, you know, sometimes there's some last minute folks out there. Uh, that was my brother, always last minute with stuff. So don't be like my brother. Uh, get your application in early. That way you can kind of uh, uh, have that information. So again, August 5th is the final application deadline. 
our semester for fall begins August 19th, okay? Uh, August 19th is going to be when this fall semester starts, okay? So very, very important, y'all. We want you to know, we want you to know that, you know, you have access to this. You have access to Promise. It, we try to make it very, very simple. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, a lot of extra things with Promise. We like to integrate all these different things uh, with Promise. So uh, the better we can make this process for you, the more simple um, it's going to be more awesome for you, right? So we want to make it very simple for you. So we don't like to add a lot of extra things, okay? Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. I can put the pathways back up. Give me a second. Let me, uh, I'll push it back and there's, then we can kind of go there. There's also a question when you were talking in the beginning about prerequisites and the mm -hmm. student who's a 12th grader who would be starting this fall. Um, they're saying like, when do these prerequisites start? Can we take them during summer or are the prerequisites once you become a college student? When can they start taking the prerequisite classes? So, so prerequisites is a loaded thing. So is, is it a question, Carlos, so I can kind of read the context or is it, it? It just says, when do those prerequisites start? Can we take them during the summer? I think you had a slide up of some classes early on, but they might've been like prerequisites for future yeah. majors so, or pathways. I'm not sure. Yeah. So that's, that's a great question. So prerequisites, you know, get built into your normal schedule. So if you wanted to start in summer, you definitely can, uh, but you can just start in fall as well. So you don't really have to start uh, the summer before. Um, so whatever your program is in regards to what you're going to study um, is going to be, uh, you know, kind of built into your schedule. So if you're, if you're on an engineering pathway, They'll start your prerequisites your first semester, and then each semester you kind of grow within it, and you'll start to take higher level courses in that. So uh, you can start in summer. We can we can help you with that to get started, uh, but uh, that that'll make you know that 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 definitely helps. But won't that disqualify them? Maybe from promise. Um. So for promise, if 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 you're a first time student. Um, it, it will not disqualify you. Uh, we, we typically will still admit students for that, especially if you're paying out of pocket. Uh, we, we won't disqualify that. Uh, we, we, you know, we don't, we don't generally count that against students because, you know, there's a lot of students that will take like a summer bridge program and they take personal growth and we still admit them. So if you are looking to take summer classes before you start in the fall, uh, then you should be good. But that's you starting right in the fall. Now, if you take a break from school and then you take like a class in between, that's where it gets a little tricky right there, y'all. So you definitely want to make sure we, we, we don't disqualify students if they take in a summer school course, if they're uh, a 2024 high school graduate. So um, don't, don't get too caught up in that. We, we do admit students uh, for promise if they do do a summer school course the summer before the fall they're enrolling for the first time. And just, and to clarify, they wouldn't, at that time, they would not yet qualify for financial aid. That would be like a class they would be paying out of pocket for. And I, and I know you still have very, very low, uh, you know, per unit registration rates, but that, is that correct? They would be paying. Yeah. So okay. for sure. So uh, typically how to work when you look at funding, so promise starts in fall and runs through the last summer when you finish promise. So you'll have two summers of funding but it's the summer after your first year, right? So it's you, if you start with this fall 24, you'll go to school for on promise fall 24, spring 25, summer 25, then your second year will start and you'll do fall 25, spring 26, and your last time of funding will be summer 2026. So There's you'll also have two, question two summers. Of how is residency verified for newly graduated high school students? I know like when you said you have to be a California resident, how do you get information from them proving or, or what do you ask for in terms of showing that they are a resident? Yeah. So the way we assess residency is like in your application, if you indicate that you went, when did you live in the state of California? Generally, uh, if you, if you provide us with uh, good information and it aligns with, with your application, then it's a self-reported thing. Uh, for students that have lived in the state of California for less than two years, we put them through a verification process. Uh, so really, it, it, as long as you answer your questions correctly in the application for admission, 
That is what we're looking at. Now, if the fact that you get asked to verify your residency, uh, you can bring a couple of different things to us in our admissions and, and records office. We have an office that deals directly with, with residency and they may ask you for like a bill in your name. It could be like a letter that comes to your house. Um, a lot of times, you, you know, you can provide documentation from your high school that you attended for uh, X amount of years. So they, they, they work with the students very, very closely to, to then you know, resolve the residency. A lot of it could be like, you know, dropping or sending off one document to fix it. It's a very, very easy process, but really where it comes into play is when, you know, students have lived in California for a shorter period of time. If you lived in California your whole life, it's generally not an issue, but it really when you're going through the application and admissions process, you want to be open and honest, right? If you say, hey, I've lived here since 1999 and, you know, or 2002 when I was born, right? Uh, I don't know. Um, generally we won't we won't kind of see you know any issues with that so as long as i would say do your best to read the questions accurately answer the questions accurately in in the application for admission and we we typically get it right from there um where where we see kind of concerns is are when students are you know just coming to california then we're going to really look into their their application and see okay hey when, when did you move here Please provide us some documentation. And, and those can be a, a wide variety of documentation. Okay. So it's self-reported in the application for admission. But a lot of times, you know, where we see a little bit of complication is with our like folks that, you know, maybe parents are active duty, they're stationed here. And that way we have a process for those students to kind of resolve that. So uh, don't, don't get, um, you know, don't get worried about that process. We resolve it all the time for our students. It's just a normal business process for us. And we're going to help you through that process. So most students won't have to verify their residency. A lot of them will just be call, uh, indicated in the system as a California resident because, you know, they answered, you know, their questions honestly and accurately. And then we go through that. So you don't really have to worry about um, that process. And we do, you know, communicate via email about all those things. Uh, so don't stress too much about it. We typically don't have that many students that have issues, but when, you know, when you are a recent, you know, California person that's moved here, that's when, you know, we, we do ask to verify. Okay. Uh, as a, a high school student taking ASL classes at the community college during high school is not disqualified for promise. No. Yeah. So students are not disqualified. Remember what I said, if we go back to the pathways, and I'll kind of go back pathway one we're looking at specifically. Uh, if the classes have been taken prior to their high school graduation date, then there's no issue, no problem at all. Really where you could get disqualified uh, outside of a summer class with us is where you're taking classes at different uh, you know, colleges, uh, our recent high school graduates don't really run into this issue uh, because they're transitioning from high school graduation and enrolling right in the fall with us. So all the college classes that you took with, with community college class before during your high school career, don't stress about those. We have our exception there. Uh, that's no issue at all. All right, uh, let me check the chat, see if there's any other ones. So I know we had a question about pathways. This is our first pathway. So if your students in high school, this is going to be the one that they're going to go after. Uh, so pathway one is a very probably the most simplest pathway we have. All that we ask is that, you know, you don't roll in a, another college after after high school. And if you come right to us after high school, you shouldn't have an issue with meeting the promise eligibility for this, even if you've taken college classes while you're in high school. So don't you don't need to stress about that. Check the Q&A, see if there's anything I want to reiterate. Is there another, are there other slides for Pathways 2 and 3? Yeah, we do have a couple. So Pathway 2 would be for students returning to the Promise, uh, or excuse me, returning to our district. So this is for a student that graduated high school, enrolled at our college, and then they start, they took a break, right? So students who haven't taken classes since fall 2022, uh, all the way to fall 23, um, if you haven't taken classes in between there, you should be eligible uh, to, to enroll in Promise. And we call this our pathway two, and this is our returning student pathway. So if you've done prom, if you've done our district before, you've done some classes with us, and now you want to come back, you took a you took a little break from, from, from going to school, you can you're eligible to apply for Promise. And then the last pathway 
is going to be pathway number three. And this is a special population pathway. So if students identify in any of these special populations, we do have a special uh, pathway for them, whether they be a stu former student in the College of Continuing Education, veteran, an undocumented student, a uh, justice-involved student, or even a, a former foster youth student, we have access for these students for promise as well. All right, I think I got most of the dates for fall start. I'll bring those back if you want to see those again. Um, that way you can kind of have those dates. Um, we'll bring them up. Okay, so here's all the important dates for fall 24. Let's see any more questions in the chat. I think you got them all. Okay. Right. Yeah, so the biggest thing, y'all, and what the easiest way to do it and to think about promise is that if your goal is to graduate high school in May or June and you want to start right with college at one of our three colleges, you're going to qualify for promise. Okay. So that's that's the biggest thing for our recent high school graduates. It's the smoothest and easiest possible. Uh, pathway. Um, large majority of the population of San Diego Promise is our recent high school graduates. And for them, it's it's a very, very smooth process um, that we provide to these students. So uh, yeah, it's it's a great one for, for these students and uh, your students shouldn't have to worry too much. Um, the biggest thing for you all is to make sure that you start and finish your financial aid application. That tends to be the biggest barrier for students. And really, the biggest thing is that you want to make sure you add one of our colleges to your financial aid application, okay? And the the way we do that is we actually have a school code, and I'll put it in the chat for you. Uh, and if you add one of our colleges to your financial aid application, uh, we will get your application. Uh, and if you don't give it to us, if you don't list this on your application, uh, that's where it gets a little bit complicated. And then we're, we're going to tell you, oh, well, we didn't, you know, we didn't get your application. We can't admit you then. So just make sure when you're applying to Promise, you list one of our, our school codes, whatever school that you want to go to. And, and that way, when it comes time for us to download the applications from the federal government or the state, when it comes to your financial aid application, we will get it. If you don't list one of our college codes that I listed in the chat for you, uh, we will not get it. So you want to make sure that you add one of those uh, numbers to your financial aid application so that way we can retrieve it from the system. Uh, and then once we do that, we match your application up in our system. You want to make sure you have an application on file. So the best thing you can do right now is, one, apply. If you haven't applied for admission, our application opens on Monday. Okay. If you uh, Once you finish your admissions application, you apply for Promise as well. That application opens on Monday. That way, when your financial aid application loads, it's all good, okay? That way we can really help you. I have a question in the Q&A, and I'm going to ask it out loud, Luke, and see if you can give them help. It's a timeline question. So if the student um, is in high school now, they plan to start at a community college, but they do have an IEP. Um, so in that case, when do they need to apply or like when do they connect with the disability services at the college? Um, and also in terms of they said, when should I apply for the disability IEP for the verification process before I enroll in 12 units or after? Yeah, so the good question. So um, this this if you all recall this slide. This is the waiver of full-time status requirement for student success and programs. And I'm going to go ahead and put the DSPS um, link in the chat for you. Um, there's specifically an application process for students looking to enroll in DSPS. Um, and and th again, this is, this is super important. The only way that you're going to be able to connect with DSPS is to apply is to apply for admission. So th this is a great website. I'm going to put into the chat for you. Um, uh, in regards to DSPS services. So the first step you need to do, kind of like how I indicated on the screen, is to one, apply to the district. That can start Monday, right? That as early as Monday, you can start that process. So apply for admission. Uh, once you do that, you can apply uh, for uh, disability support programs and services. We have an application in the link I applied for you. Submit the application. Um, they'll reach out to you. They'll figure out what's your timeline for enrollment. 
The sooner you can start that process and meet with the counselor, the sooner you can obtain uh, this form. Now, once you, after you apply, then the student will meet with a DSPS counselor. And the DSPS counselor may need you to bring some documentation like your IEP, like your 504 plan to that meeting with the counselor. And then the counselor really helps you uh, come to the conclusion of how many units would be full time for you. So again, all of this process can start Monday. The application for admission for fall opens Monday. Promise open Mondays. The DSPS application is open now, but you need to apply for admission first because they will not see you unless you have a student ID number. Okay. So my suggestion, the sooner you can start this process starting on Monday, I would highly suggest that you dive into that process so you can get a counselor appointment, so you can connect with folks, know how many units to take. And if you submit that DSPS uh, waiver to us, the faster we can admit you into Promise once all of your other requirements are fulfilled for Promise. All right, that's all I see for right now. I'll let you know if I have new questions coming up, but so far I think you've covered everything that's come up. All right. Great questions, y'all. And, and really, I think the thing that I want you to know and really after this is, you know, um, we're here to help you out. You know, we're going to have sessions called the Get Started series um, that for students who apply to Promise Only, uh, that you're going to be invited to a special Zoom session where you can kind of meet with me or my team to help uh, review your application and check your status. So uh, once you apply to Promise, you'll be given access to the Get Started series and we'll host them uh, typically about twice a month on Zoom and you will have breakout rooms where you can ask us questions. We call students on the phone to give them some privacy. Um, so it's a great way for you to kind of connect and to check your status uh, uh, for Promise. So. Uh, it'll be an awesome process for you. So that way you can, we can plug you in. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, stressing about the enrollment process. We'll have folks that are going to be there to help you. And the sooner that you can plug in, the sooner you can apply for Promise and school, it's going to allow you to get access to all these programs. And if they want to follow you on Instagram, where should they follow you? Yeah, so Instagram is awesome. We we have a we have our promise Instagram. Let me go ahead and drop the link, the actual hyperlink. Um, you can follow us just with the ad if you wanted to. Um, I'll drop that, but I'll get you a I'll get you a, a URL as well because I know sometimes when I when I go to click it, it it always you know I like the link to get me there to directly. Um, here's a question I'll answer no problem in that. Uh, what if you have a you want to go to Southwestern? Yeah, so Southwestern has a promise as well. Um, it's a little bit different. I think the the process of obtaining it, um, probably very, very similar funding model and what they'll provide. Um, we definitely supplement our student support. Like not all Promise programs will provide book grant support. Uh, we also provide like, you know, different uh, support for like, you know, technology and stuff like that. So it's a little bit different, but for the most part, paying for the fees will generally be the same. Um, but the the enrollment process is 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 always a little bit different. I honestly the the best way to do it would just be to Google Southwestern College uh, Promise, and uh, one something will come up in the chat for them, and you'll be able to kind of dive into um, you know get access to to that program. But it is a little bit different. But I would say generally it should be the same uh, and not not too different. You know a lot of these um a lot of these things are going to be the same. So uh, there you go. Look at quick Google. Uh, Carla, appreciate you sharing that. Of course. All right, I don't know if I see any more questions. I'll check the Q&A. No, it. and we're getting toward the end of our time, actually. We only have a couple of minutes left. So, oh, let's see, is there somebody new? Oh, they're just saying thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you awesome. for everything. <laughs> yeah. But again, y'all, just my, my my biggest suggestion to you is to plug in, apply. If you wait to apply, you're you're you know like we won't be reaching out to you. Versus if you apply now, you'll be in you'll be in our system. So that way we can reach out to you. Okay. So um, best thing you do just apply now. There's there's no like uh, negative things that can come back from uh, applying. It's a free application for Promise. It's a free application for for admission too. So you're it's it's just your time that you're going to need to invest a little bit. So. 
highly recommend applying. That way we plug you into our support network and our pipeline. Uh, and then that way we can help you out. All right. And that that is all I have to add as well. I did put my email address, which you all have since you registered. Uh, if you have any questions, if you need to get a copy of some information, I can get the slide deck from Luke. Uh, if you need a link, if you have questions, if you need help with the application, a college application or a financial aid application like the FAFSA or the DREAM Act, please don't hesitate to contact us. And also this recording is going to be put online on our website, the calsoapsandiego.org website starting tomorrow. Uh, we keep a, rec a recording of all of our webinars there. So that'll be available to you tomorrow. Anything else? I don't see any other questions or anything like that. Luke, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you breaking down the, the process and making it, you know, digestible. So we have like the confidence that we can do it. And thank you everybody for attending. I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar for tonight. And thank you everybody for coming. So Take long. care, y'all. Best of luck.